seconds, an NBC News investigation into a hospital accused of declining treatment to cancer patients when they needed it the most, claiming they didn't qualify for coverage. We hear from a patient who used to be a nurse at that hospital, hospital and still couldn't receive care. This is part of a bigger issue. Monster truck versus PC News investigation. A New Mexico hospital accused of turning away cancer patients over their insurance coverage. Our team speaks to several of those patients who say they were left with nowhere else to go. Stay with us. We're back now with Top Stories News Feed, and we begin with the monster truck stunt in Maine in allegations against a hospital in New Mexico. Our team speaking with a dozen cancer patients who say they've been denied care from the only treatment center in their community. NBC's Valerie Castro traveled to Las Cruces, New Mexico, and spoke with patients who say the hospital turned its back on them. For 30 years, Barbara Corral dedicated her life to nursing. It's my calling. It's why God put me here. During six of those years, she found a second home at Memorial Medical Center in Las Cruces, New Mexico. We were a family. You know, all the nurses I worked with on the floor, we were a close team and we took care of each other. She eventually left the hospital for another job, but as life would have it, two years ago, she would return, diagnosed with a gynecologic cancer. My own body betrayed me, basically. Her doctor ordering radiation as the best course of treatment. So she turned to MMC, which prides itself on being the only nationally accredited cancer program in the region. And it's the only radiation provider for miles. The doctor called back and he said, well, they won't treat you. And I said, why? Well, they don't take your insurance. Corral says she was insured through True Health New Mexico, paying $800 a month for coverage. But she says the hospital she'd worked at for years turned her away when she needed them most. How did you feel? I felt betrayed. I was heartbroken. I was scared because what was I going to do now? Where was I going to go get treatment if I couldn't do it here in my own hometown? Corral isn't alone. An NBC News investigation found a dozen other cancer patients who reported experiencing similar treatment, denied care if they didn't have insurance or were covered by a provider that MMC told them it didn't accept. Some say they were told they could get treatment if they made costly upfront payments. Como ellos no están enfermos, ellos no saben lo que padecemos. A ellos les importa recibir el dinero. Veronica Hernandez, a two-time breast cancer survivor, wife and mother to two special needs children, says the hospital turned her down for not having insurance and even refused her offer to pay cash for a consultation. Yo me sentía tan desesperada y le dije a la muchacha, de verdad, si yo no tengo una aseguranza, ¿me van a dejar morir? ¿Me voy a morir? Y me dijo, sí, te vamos a dejar morir y te vas a morir. Yoli Diaz runs Care Las Cruces, a nonprofit that provides financial assistance to cancer patients, including Barbara and Veronica. People are worth more than money. What is the most common complaint that you hear? The most common is that they won't give them an appointment because they don't have health insurance. Las Cruces is part of Doña Ana County, the region Memorial Medical serves, where the most recent census shows 23% of residents live in poverty. That's double the nationwide rate. Almost 70% of the population is Hispanic. 15% have no health insurance. MMC opened in the 1950s and for decades operated as a non-profit facility until 2004 when a for-profit company later acquired by LifePoint Health took over, signing a 40-year lease with the city and county. Under its lease agreement, MMC is required to continue providing care to those unable to pay the full cost of health care services rendered to them. Hospital documents obtained by NBC News show its written indigent care policy covered cancer treatments for years, but that changed after it was bought by a New York private equity firm, Apollo Global Management. That is our priority. John Harris, the hospital CEO, declined requests for an interview. A LifePoint spokesperson telling NBC News it's, quote, very rare that it can't help uninsured or underinsured people qualify for financial assistance, also disputing that they've turned people away. Adding, any changes to policies or procedures have always been done in close partnership with local government and community leaders to ensure compliance with the terms of the lease. But Diaz is not convinced. I am concerned for sick residents who live here, and I'm disappointed that access to needed health care does not seem to be a priority. 
She's been vocal about the issue since 2021, blaming not just the hospital. It's not leaving up to the lease because also the county's not, in my opinion, and the city because they're both uh, lessees, they're not living up to the lease either. Becky Corin, a Las Cruces City Council member elected after the lease agreement was already in place, says local leaders have called for transparency from MMC. There are a few things that are outlined in the lease, including monthly reports about where the money is going and, and who's being cared for that we haven't seen from, from Memorial Medical. And, and I think that would be one of the first steps to understanding what all is going on here. What efforts have been made to hold them accountable and what has the reaction been from them? So we've asked them to come to several meetings. Those meetings almost universally a memorial chooses not to come. MMC's own marketing materials say delivering care to all of our neighbors, regardless of their ability to pay, is foundational to our mission and our commitment to our community. Corral would end up traveling more than 200 miles from home for treatment. Today, she's in remission, but still fighting. I'm tired, like exhausted. How do you feel about Memorial now? I could be dying and I wouldn't go there. But I would never tell anybody to go to Memorial if they were sick. Never in a million years. All right, Valerie Castro joins us now in studio. So, Valerie, your report focuses specifically on that one hospital in New Mexico. But LifePoint, the company you profiled there, they have other hospitals. Are there other concerns beyond Memorial Medical? There are more concerns, and they've actually caught the attention of lawmakers on Capitol Hill. LifePoint operates the largest chain of rural hospitals in the country in at least 16 different states. But the company and the private equity firm that owns it, Apollo Global, are named in two Senate inquiries looking into how these firms manage emergency room departments and patient care, but private equity firms continue to take over these community hospitals. And Tom, according to an NBC News estimate, the companies that they own, like LifePoint, they manage staff or operate more than 40% of emergency rooms across the U.S. All right, an important story. I know you and the investigative team are going to stay on top of it. Valerie, thank you. Coming up